Alrighty, welcome back. You may notice there's only 10 cards in this pack. Well, the last time we did a 5v5, two days ago, I said, you know what, that was fun, we might not do it for a bit. Well, it turns out actually people really enjoyed it. So we're doing another 5-on-5 five five cube draft, and with that comes 5 packs of 10. I also opened 1 ring and Bowmasters. Kind of a shame to pass 1 ring, but I think Bowmasters is just too good. So I'll pass Samuel Rolf a 1 ring, which he will undoubtedly take. And then Tom gets a Ponder, most likely, maybe a Flame Slash if he's already in red. But I'm going to take Bowmasters. Card is just the goat. Speaking of the goat, Nate Stoyer is passing to me. My squad, by the way, is myself, Anton, Fierbina, his buddy Max Capone, actually a former Magic Pro as well, Mac, of course, and Tom Martell. So, first pick, Bowmasters. Second pick, I think we just do it. I think we just slam Memory Jar. Uh, is that right? If that's wrong, I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> or rather, if that's if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Because there's also Prismatic Vista. The problem is... Hmm, Prismatic Vista is such a worse card than Memory Jar. Or sorry, Memory Jar is such a worse card. I'm going to take Memory Jar, though. I, I, I think that in this format, you can try to aim a little higher, go a little more broken, you get more first picks. That makes me want to take cards like Memory Jar. I have more opportunities to open Moxes and Mana Vault or Mana Crypt, that sort of thing, or uh, pick up like a whole Breacher. You just get more first picks. You're opening five packs of first picks. So instead of seeing, you know, three, you're, first of all, you're straight up seeing 50 cards rather than 45 jewels. Chill out. Second, you're you're seeing, uh, you're getting more opportunities to first pick, so you could, you could conceivably open four or five pieces of power. I'm going to take Urza's Bobble here. It's not amazing, but I don't really want to take Collective Brutality or Grave Titan. And then all the green cards aren't that interesting to me. So let's just take Bobble. We could also be like an Academy-style deck if we see the cards. Though here, I think I will just take Inquisition. That card is good. And uh, I don't really see a reason to take a random off-color or something of a different color so far. So note that with five packs of 10, there's no wheeling. There's 10 players in the draft. Every card we see that we don't take, it is gone forever. And I've got an interesting start here. All right. So here, for me, it's going to be between Mightstone and Weakstone and Mistfault Bridge. They're both good if you end up with artifacts like Tolerant Academy or Workshop. I think I'm going to take Mistfault because I, I will probably want to play blue. And... Miss Vault's also like a fine card for Tinker if I end up with like a Tinker Jar sort of situation. I don't know. They're both they're both about the same. They aim in the same places. Miss Vault Bridge, maybe if I end up in a blue-black deck and I just need it as, a, as fixing, I can also play it. So I'll do that. And then this pack is pretty bad. I might actually just take Dreadhorde Arcanist. Pass all the green multicolor stuff. Sam can do what he wants with that. Arcanist... I already have an Inquisition, but mostly if I open Ancestral or see a bunch of one-mana spells, Arcanist could be good. I'm, I'm willing to spec on that. Oh, like Unholy Heat. Yeah, I'm going to take Unholy Heat, pass a Thalia. I really doubt Sam's putting Thalia on his deck. Martell might. His, his range is, is, is wide enough, I think. Uh, do I like this jar over the... Hmm, Prismatic Vista so far. I don't know. TBD. Oh, Black Leaf Cliffs. Yes. Take that. That's a nice pickup. Just a little bit of actual fixing. Because I could be black-red and then just have this jar. And then, yeah, I'll take a mind collapse too. Okay, not as busted as I was hoping. But, you know, we've got lots of packs left. We're <laughs> only a fifth of the way through the draft. And let's see what we can get as our last pick here. It's kind of neat too. When you get your last pick, it's just a card you haven't seen yet. So I could get anything. Well, not anything. There's a lot of cards that couldn't be there. Eh, last pick, Arwen, sure. All right, any any power? No. Oh, there's an Entomb. Uh, bad experiences lately with Entomb. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to take it, though. I don't know. Smuggler's Copter is good. I haven't seen any animate stuff, but it's pretty early. Entomb's pretty busted. I think I'll just take Entomb and pass a Copter and a bunch of other cards that don't really matter. All right. Maybe this works out, maybe not. Well, this isn't a very good second pick. I guess I could just take Necron Deathmark. I think I like that more than Evolved Sleeper. I'm not really looking for Plateau. Young Pyromancer wouldn't be crazy. I have a bunch of one-mana spells, but 
I think I'd rather just have the Necron death mark here. And then, oh, <laughs> there's Mishra's Workshop and Gristlebrand uh, alongside Cake Command and Blood Tithe. Brutal. Mishra's Workshop helps cast Necron death mark, by the way. Kind of feel like I should just Gristlebrand, given that I have Entomb here. I have Jar and Deathmark to for Workshop, but I haven't really gotten past any big artifact incentives. I think I'm going to take Gristlebrand and hope that works out. Oh, Dark Ritual. I like that a lot. <laughs> We're kind of a Dreadhorde Arscanist deck. We have four one-mana spells, though casting Entomb and Dark Ritual isn't that good, though I guess actually Entomb with Arcanist is kind of nice. You can Entomb a one-mana spell. But easily Dark Ritual. Hmm. Now I take Imperial Seal over City of Traders. Okay, we're getting kind of hooked up here. And then this pack, do I want Mana Morphos or Show and Tell? Show and Tell Gristlebrand is pretty good. Or Goldspan, actually. You know, the Dark Ritual kind of makes me want to just take Goldspan. This Jar is actually looking fine. It's not, I'm not too worried about it. Um, hmm. Which one of these is better? I think I'll just take the Goldspan. Oh, late at Tali. All right, this is great. Sorry, Metamorph. We'll take a fatal push. Wow, this is actually turning into an Arcanist deck and a Faithless Looting. We are getting mega hooked up. Okay. Well, we've got our lane now. I'm really glad I chose to go this way because this has worked out nicely. Now I actually have seven one-mana spells for <laughs> Dreadhorde Arcanist, though. Looting. Oh, wait. Inquisition is great. Looting, Entomb, Dark Ritual is not very good, and Imperial Seal are all like... A little dicey, but push, Inquisition, and, and Unholy Heat are great. And eh, there's situations where these one-mana spells could be good. I've got Itali and Gristlebrand. I've got Imperial Seal. I've got Entomb. I just need an Animate now, but I've got three more packs to find them. So I kind of feel like this is going nicely. Uh, and then I open this pack. Uh, I don't want to take Asmo because the Underworld Cookbook's already gone, I think. I don't think Taiga's good. I'm just going to take Feywild Caretaker. It's the best card in the pack. Reanimating it is still fine. I could also just put it in my deck, potentially. And uh, I just don't want to pass it. So all that together is kind of a disappointing first pick, but it is what it is. Oh, Xander's Lounge. Probably going to be the pick. Not a Basalt Monolith deck, sadly. I do like those decks, but Xander's Lounge is going to be the perfect land, especially since I just picked up Feywild Caretaker, and I would like to play that card. Oh, this Mist Vault Bridge could get back in as well. All right, all that's on my list now are animates. I kind of wish I took the show and tell now that I picked up Itali, but I think this is still pretty good. All right, here we are. Life Death. This is this is what I was looking for, so slamming a Life Death over Royal Warden and Dark Slick Shores. Ooh, I'll take a Fire Covenant. All right, this Mind Collapse can probably go. Now that I picked up Fire Covenant here, I love Fire Covenant. It's just a great card. Can I cast Life Death with Dreadhorde Arcanist? I don't think so. No. That's a shame. Oh, I could pump Dreadhorde Arcanist power. I have a way to do that now. Feywild Caretaker, if I go, if I get the initiative and I go to the Forge Room and I put two counters on the Arcanist and then attack and flashback a Fire Covenant, I mean, that does sound pretty good, to be honest. Here, I'm not going to try Oath of Druids. That thing is just always a trap. I'm going to take Deathrite Shaman, I think. I don't think Sam's going to take Containment Priest. That'd be the card I'd be worried about him taking. Deathrite Shaman. I guess I don't have any fetches. It's so good if you get the the, the ways to, to make it work, though. And Faithless Looting is kind of a start for that. Just Black Red getting a Mana Dork is just such a huge upside. And then here... Uh, I'm not really into Scrubland. Passing this top, I think, is fine. This doesn't really look like a top deck. I don't like passing Ballista, but Death Breeder Champion can pump Dread Horror Arcanist. I'm not going to play the Ballista in this deck. I think I might play the Death Greeter. And passing Ballista and top is kind of the same. It's also Malevolent Hermit, which is okay, but I'm going to be basically Black Red. Oh, I think I'll take Black Red Land over Flame Tongue, though. I do like Flame Tongue. Hmm. Maybe a tap land. I already have some tap lands. No, let's just take the flame tongue. Flame tongue. I think flame tongue's pretty good. I think that card is actually quite strong. Right now, Death Rate Shaman is not getting in there. We have 20 playables right now. And this is pack three. Uh, I'm gonna take Relic. Sam loves. Oh no, I can't. I gotta take Overgrown Tomb. Cause I have Death Rite Shaman. 
And if I end up playing Deathrite Shaman, Overgrown Tomb is pretty useful. Also with Life Death as well. And you never know, like you could open like Misty Rainforest and, and it's useful to have an Overgrown Tomb in that situation. Also, I guess Sam passed, passed me a last pick, Mystic Forge. All right, I'll take Graveyard Trespasser. Pretty decent chance I, I play that thing. All right, going into pack four of five here momentarily. Uh, slam a curse scroll. All right, let's go. Let's go. Ugh, now I have to pass Jace and Mystic Confluence. I guess I get to take a Liliana. I think that's better than Magda here. I only have one reanimate card. Oh, what a brutal first pick. I have not been loving my first picks. After Orcish Bowmasters, it all went downhill. Like Feywild Caretaker. <laughs> It's not the card I dream of first picking, I'll tell you that much. Well, here we are, though. And I guess I'm taking Liliana. Yeah, that seems like seems like the, the selection. Okay, Bone Shards versus Underground Sea versus Mystical Tutor. I just picked Liliana, so right now I have Liliana, Faithless Looting, and Tomb as discard outlets. Memory draw, kind of. There's also Underground Sea which would make it easier to cast Feywild Caretaker and any other blue cards, or just Bone Shards. I think I just take, gotta take Bone Shards. Also, it's really good with Arcanist. Just a good removal spell you can cast over and over again. Grief versus Badlands. Man, I do, I hate passing these lands, but this looks like a pretty good Grief deck. Good Grief. All right, I think so. Oh, now I can take Recurring Nightmare. I just took a, a disc, a couple discard outlets, and I took Grief, and I have kind of a lot of creatures. All right, I think I'll take that over Triarch Praetorian here, because this deck was also a little short on animates, so. All right, I, I, I like that. I would definitely trade this jar for a Prismatic Vista, though I will play the jar in this deck, I think. When you have Bowmasters in your deck, playing jar seems pretty reasonable. Oh, interesting. Here there's Firestorm. Firestorm seems like it would be pretty decent in this deck as another discard outlet. And there, I would have to pass an Urza Saga to Nate, which I don't love doing that. Also, Firestorm with Arcanist is not that bad. All right, I'm going to try Firestorm. I, I would like to see how that card does. Going to make some cuts now. Urza's Bobble actually isn't really doing anything for me. So right now, this is 25 cards. Yeah, I'll figure out a couple more cuts. Ooh, I like him to Turok, and this deck is playing a lot of black, so one of the rewards for that is him. I don't think I need Inferno Titan. I've got two really big things and three five drops, so I'm not really that worried. Oh, and then Raucous Theater, that is nice. I, I mean, a Phantasmal Image is fine, but Theater is really, really good here. I kind of like this Death Rite again. And here, Nate, I guess I'll take Rex Sage. I don't think he's playing white. I think I might take out Death Greeter's Champion and Graveyard Trespasser for now. Archfiend of the Dross. I could definitely see myself playing that, but I'd be passing it in Kite Sail Larcenist. Huh. Mm. I think I'd rather just have the Archfiend. I think there's going to be matchups where I would like to have that card. And here, I kind of ended up with a lot of spells, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, it's going to make playing this Recurring Nightmare a little challenging, but now I kind of, because I picked up that Firestorm, I wish I had taken Underground Sea over Born Shards, I think, though. I am doing kind of nicely on duels. I've got Xander's Lounge, Blackleaf Cliffs, Raucous Theater, and Mistfall Bridge. The Overgrown Tomb is just a card I'll play if I play Death Rite, because it's good to be able to activate the green ability of Death Rite. I think, I think that is worth it. Oh, and a last pick, Research Desk. Yeah, I'll play that card. It's also a nice card to loot away. All right. I don't want to get greedy. I think just a Mox Jet would, would do just fine. Oh, I guess it's a Time Walk. All right, we'll take the Time Walk. And Goldspan Time Walk, anyone? It's also nice if I can get the Dreadhorde Arcanist to two. But yeah, slamming Time Walk here, not even passing anything too good. You love to see that. All right, all right. And then Nate's going to open a double power pack, so we're going to get a Mox second pick. <laughs> we take that. Uh, this is looking pretty good. What am I missing? I could use more ways to reanimate my creatures. All I have is a life, death, and a recurring nightmare. So I definitely would like that. Mm, couldn't, wouldn't mind another big creature, though. I'm just going to slam Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt is making this the Goat Arcanist deck, and it's just a great card. So I'll take that over Sheldock and Lorien Revealed. I think that's pretty easy. And maybe this Memory Jar gets out? I don't know. 
That's close. Oh, that is very nice. A little Gorio's Vengeance action for my Italian Gristle brand. I am very thankful for that. All right, I've gotten hooked up. I've never had this many spells that a Dreadhorde Arcus could flash back. I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards it can bring back. Half my deck is cards that the Arcanist can bring back. This Death Rite, I think, is actually going to get out. And then once again, I find myself on the verge of cutting Recurring Nightmare here. But what are you going to do? Okay, I mean... Oh, Troll is perfect. I can get Xander's Lounge, Raucous Theater, and... Uh, it's a way to it's a card I can just life death on turn two. There's also currency converter, which is pretty nice with like Firestorm, Faithless Looting, Bone Shards, but I, I kind of feel like Troll is just awesome. This research desk looks pretty good. One of the downsides of research desk is it does exile your big creatures forever if you see one, so I'm not sure about that one yet. Gix's Command or Creeping Tar Pit. I have kind of a lot of tap lands. There's also Yogwill. Maybe I actually should take Yogwill this time. I normally don't, but I've got Dark Ritual, so I can get some mana out of it, and I have Time Walk. This actually looks like a Yogwill deck, so I'm going to take the Yogwill. I also just don't really want... It would be my fourth tap land, so it would almost make me want to cut the Mist Vault Bridge, which I don't really want to do. Like, it's not really getting me that much of a card out of it. I think the Yogwill could be good here. Right now, this is 13 land, so I need to cut like four cards. And I already cut the Recurring Nightmare. Brutal. Well, maybe the Necron Deathmark could get cut. I have a kind of a lot of removal here. And other than that, I'm not sure. And here, <laughs> Tamiyo Time Walk is nice, but I don't think the Overgrown Tomb is gonna be is gonna be able to support that. Name sticker goblins pretty nice with Goldspan and Atali. It can be nice with Flame Tongue. I don't think I want Rabble Master. Yeah, I could see myself playing Name Sticker Goblin. Oh, Bazaar of Baghdad or Scrapwork Mud. Is this a good Bazaar of Baghdad deck? I don't have Urborg. Hmm. Whereas Scrapwork Mutt is also pretty nice. I don't know. That's actually pretty close. I kind of feel like I have so many discard outlets. I'd rather just take the Scrapwork Mutt. Oh, we got a sneak attack, like, last pick? Ha! Oh, that is so good. Sneaking Italian Gristlebrand is just awesome. All right, the Name Sticker Goblin's in. I think the Scrapwork Mutt is not. <laughs> Doomsday and Blightsteel. Well, I'm going to hate one. I'm not playing either. I guess I'd more likely to... To want to hate that. <laughs> and there's a Jace. Back to back Doomsday Jace Wielder of Mysteries. All right. Let's go to deck building. We've got a lot of cuts to make here. Okay. All right. Had to make some tough cuts here. Ended up playing 16 lands, well, 15 plus Troll, which I think is, is okay because Dark Ritual also can provide mana. And I have tons of cheap cards. Ultimately cut Flame Tongue, Unholy Heat, and Firestorm because I still have a lot of removal. Bolt, Fatal Push, Bone Shards. Bowmaster's Fire Covenant. I like Yogwill here. I think with Dark Ritual, Name Sticker Goblin, Time Walk to Flashback, I think it's worth it in all these cheap cards. Obviously not cutting any animates. I do think the Jar is still worth it. Because also this deck is kind of a good Jar deck where I just fill my graveyard. Dreadheart Arcanist still looks great here. And playing the big things, the Sneak, Goldsman, Feywild Caretaker. Looks pretty good. And my teammates have some nice decks too. Anton is on Red White. Ragavan, Figure of Destiny, no power, Lotus Petal, but has a White Plume Adventurer. Martel's got a nice one. He's got a Sapphire, Great Lands, a bunch of fetches, three fetches, and Strip Mine to go with his Renin Six and, and uh, Crucible. His Atroxa, his Mind Twist, tons of Accelerants. I like this deck a lot. Max, besides a giant size deck pick, uh, has a pretty solid blue black deck. No power on this one either, but Memory Lapse, Deep Cavern Bat. Bunch of removal, R Rafine is nice, Carnage Interpreter, Force Will, Subtlety, Jace, an Urza, which could be good. And then uh, Mac has got a Ruby and a Lotus, and kind of a, we're going to end up cutting some of these red cards, basically be blue, white, splash, red aggro, which is yeah, a solid deck. Obviously, uh, having Lotus, Ruby, and Library goes a long way. Let's battle Talisker. Round one is starting. All right, on the draw here, 
kind of an awkward hand, but I think Fire Covenant makes me want to keep this thing. Hopefully he's playing a deck that has creatures in it. Well, if this is a Hex Drinker, okay. Well, <laughs> Fire Covenant's going to be too slow now. Um, land, he goes land. I think I'm going to play Xander's Lounge. I really hope he just has creatures. I don't really want to Imperial Seal for a removal spell for Hex Drinker. That just sounds way too weak to me. So I'm going to hope he's not leveling here. I guess if he cycles Generous Ent, maybe he'll get a tap land. Yeah, he got a tap land. And I hope he has a play next turn that isn't leveling up Hex Drinker. I think what I'm going to do, he kept it on top, is uh, Goryeo's Vengeance. Oh, that makes me want to just Entomb for Itali here. Or Imperial Seal for Entomb. And then next turn, I think... I think I Atali? Or do I Gristlebrand? It kind of depends on what he does. Hmm. Glissa Sunslayer. Oh, well, that means I'm actually just going to Fire Covenant here. I don't think I'm that worried about a Counterspell. Maybe I should be. I think waiting one turn here is going to make things all work out kind of nicely. I'm just going to pass. All right. Let's just do this. Nug those. Hopefully that works out. And then I can Vengeance a Gristlebrand if I so desire. Let's see what he's got. Under Mountain Adventurer. Okay. Um, do I want to Entomb Itali or Gristlebrand? What am I going to do this turn? I think, I think I'm going to Entomb because I think I'm going to Gristlebrand this turn. I'm at 10. I go to 17. Yeah, that's got to be better. It's Entomb Gristlebrand. Oh, that's pretty nice. Uh... Yeah, let's just do Time Walk first, or I don't have any way to cast it if I Vengeance this turn, but Time Walk when I have the initiative would be pretty nice. If I hit Bone Shards here, what does is, what is Casting Time Walk do? I guess it gives me more mana to play with after Gristlebrand. So let's just do that. Let's just go Time Walk, draw, Gorio's Vengeance, the Gristlebrand. Go to three here. Name Sticker Goblin, Bone Shards. Oh, I kind of have it all here. So let's attack with Gristlebrand. And I don't think I'm going to need to pay seven more life, though I will uh, go and get myself a Swamp. Here, I could Name Sticker Goblin. I think what I'm going to do is just pass... Oh, actually, do I want Gristlebrand in the graveyard? That's a good question. I could Bone Shards sacking the Gristlebrand. Oh, yeah, and then I can Goriel's Vengeance it again with Yogwill. So let's not set a stop on my end step. Let's go Sacrifice a Creature, Bone Shards, Sack Gristlebrand. And then I think now I just pass and discard a Mountain. That's fine. Oh, I guess I don't want to discard an Island. I guess I'll just discard the Swamp. Keep up. Bowmasters, no reason to pay seven life down to three. That would just, I think, be way too greedy. And then next turn, I can go Name Sticker Goblin, Yog Will, Goryeo's Vengeance, Time Walk. I mean, that sounds pretty good. We've got some busted stuff going on. All right, let's see if we can uh, break our losing streak here. I've been on a bit of a cooler lately, but uh, I feel good. This deck, this deck, I think, has the goods. All right, land into <laughs> Oracle of Moldaya, sure. Grist on top, grist for the mill. And then reanimate on the Undermountain Adventure. You got it. You are now the Monarch. So they're gonna scry two, or Talos is gonna scry two to try to, do I care about grist? I don't really care about grist. So I think I just wanna bolt the Oracle just to prevent him from playing more stuff. Though, I think I, I just win here very easily. This is going to be a nice turn. I'm really I'm looking forward to this Name Sticker Goblin Yogg will turn. Because I'm going to Name Sticker Goblin, and worst case scenario, I'll have seven mana next turn. 
Yogg will down to four mana, and I can go Time Walk Goryeo's Vengeance. But there's a lot of times when I have more. If I drew a Dark Ritual this turn, that would have been gross. All right, let's go Name Sticker Goblin. Okay, five mana, Yogg will. Uh, let's Goryeo's Vengeance, Gristlebrand. I don't even need to time walk. I just need to bolt Talisker. And then I guess time walk. And ba-boom, game one in the bag. All right, sideboarding against green mid-range. Do I want Firestorm, Unholy Heat? Unholy Heat sounds like it could be good. Flame Tongue seems like it could be good too. Maybe here is where I take out Memory Jar. Still like most of the other stuff, but I do want I do want Flame Tongue for sure. Unholy Heat, huh? Shock on Oracle or Hex Drinker isn't bad. It can kill a Grist at, in the late game. I mean, maybe De Necron Deathmark is more of my speed. Once I've slowed the game down, I can I can slam a, a Necron Deathmark. I don't hate that. I don't think I want to cut Grief. I'm already at like the minimum number of lands. Maybe I, on, I want Deathmark on, Necron Deathmark on the play, but not on the draw. Do I want Liliana to have an answer to Hex Drinker? It's not crazy, but I kind of like where I'm at here, so well, let's battle. All right, on the draw here, Time Walk does the, did some good work as usual. And Dreadhorn Arcanist is sick in this deck, and Fire Covenant's great against his deck in general. So I think I'll keep this. And plus, Goryeo's Vengeance means that if I draw Entomb or in Imperial Seal, I've got me a Gristlebrand or a Tali. So I kind of feel like this hand is rolled up nicely. Talisker is mulliganing once here into Razor Verge Thicket Hex Drinker. All right. Gold Span Dragon. Oh, <laughs> I should have played the Swamp. I, I was like, I, I'll, I'll represent a Bolt, but I have him to Turok in my deck, which I actually would play on turn two. Once again, I kind of hope that he doesn't just level up Hex Drinker here. But yeah, that's what's happening here. All right, time to draw a bolt here. Not quite. Let's go Dreadhorde Arcanist past the turn. So Hex Drinker is going to be an issue, unless he has a three drop, which doesn't seem like it. And Green Suns for one. Ooh, not an exalted creature. All right, I'll take four. Dark Ritual. Oh, Imperial Seal, okay. Land. <laughs> I think I'll just keep the Arcanist back. I'm going to Imperial Seal for Entomb. And then pass the turn. And then I could Entomb. So I'm going down to eight here. Mm, I could also Chump. Hmm, is that good? I think I actually will chump. I don't think I want to cast Imperial Seal again. Though, actually, maybe I should have. Because what I could do is Entomb for Atali, attack Imperial Seal, and put it on top. Huh. So now I've got Fire Covenant, but I can't really do that. I kind of feel... Like, let's see, if I Entomb Goryeo's Vengeance for Gristlebrand, I won't be able to Time Walk this turn, but I could... I could find Bone Shards. So if I go to 19, and then Goryeo's... If I go Entomb Goryeo's Vengeance, draw 7, I'm at 12 still. If I find Bone Shards and I kill the Hex Drinker, that puts me in pretty good shape. I could also get a Tali, but I think... I think, let's see, Gristlebrand, draw to Bone Shards, and that's the only thing. If I miss on Bone Shards, well, if I hit Fatal Push, I can kill the Krasis and then I don't die, and then I have another turn to maybe do stuff. All right, I think Gristlebrand is going to be the best call. Let's go Gristlebrand. Oh, I'm getting endurance. Okay, so I was getting I was getting hosed no matter what. Alright, 
on to game three. Okay, so endurance is a good one to know about. Maybe I side in like Deathmark, Necron Deathmark, Liliana. Endurance makes me not want to put Yogwell in my deck also. I think I still want Faithless Looting. I think Grief is still good. Flame Tongue's still good. Maybe I just put in the Necron Deathmark. And then just... I'll still get Endurance some amount of the time, but he's not always going to have it. And I, <clears throat> I think this deck, especially on the play, can play Control fairly well. All right, I got a mulligan that. The problem is if I draw Black Source, this hand still doesn't do anything. I think I'm just going to mulligan and hope hope to, I don't know, have a playable hand. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll keep. I'll put back Goldspan Dragon and do I put back Grief or Lightning Bolt? I kind of think I just put back Lightning Bolt. Fire Covenant and Bowmasters will hopefully cover some amount here. And then maybe I hard cast a Grief next turn, or in, in, in a few turns, rather. If I draw Dark Ritual, I could do it now. It'd be nice if he led on Hex Drinker again. This is the one draw where it would be really really good if he did. Bum, bum, bum. Surveil, Botanical Sanctum, Shua. Oh, well, all right. Let's just cast Grief here. It's his hand. Brainstorm, Lorien Revealed, Green Sun, Zenith, Shieldred. I guess I'm just going to take the Shieldred. I do have Fire Covenant for Shieldred. <clears throat> if he Green Suns, he's going to get Delighted Halfling. I think I take Shieldred still then. And the reason is, I don't know if I'm drawing... Oh, I can't attack. <laughs> I was trying to attack there. <clears throat> I think I can nail his Delighted Halfling with Orcish Bowmasters if he goes Green Suns for one here. Because it, it actually kind of makes sense curve-wise. You Green Suns for one. Oh, he just drew the Delighted Halfling? Oh, he doesn't know about the Bowmasters, and he just passed. <clears throat> All right. Please brainstorm. Please brainstorm. Oh, 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 oh. Let's do it. Ooh, satisfying and delicious. All right. So he's got a Green Suns and a Lorien Revealed floating around. <clears throat> I mean, this game's far from over. Drawing Dreadhorde Arcanist was pretty bad, but this actually does give me a pretty decent chance now because <clears throat> now I have a 4-4, a 3-2, and a 1-1, and he's got now three lands. If I draw a red land, I think I win. I just get to Fire Covenant all his stuff. Oof. I was really just trying to set it up so that he would cast this Brainstorm with when I had Bowmaster mana up. And luckily, that is worked out. I want him to play Creatures, not Removal here. Green, green Suns for one is still the best play. Okay, into Hex Drinker. Okay. Uh, red, red, red. Oh, nice. Um, well, I don't really want to trade the Bowmasters for the Hex Drinker. So I think I'm just going to send for seven here. He's got Lorien Revealed in hand. So seems uh, pretty good to just swing, land, pass. And now I have Fire Covenant if he tries to level up the Hex Drinker too much or if he plays another creature this turn. And either way, I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, that Bowmasters was just sickening. Mold to five here. All right, if you're just going to pass, I'll pass. Land. Mm, I'm just going to send with all of these now. All right, I'll pass here. He's got to do something. All right, uh, yeah, we'll trade. He goes to three. Then I play a Dreadhorde Arcanist here. And still feeling pretty good about this. Let's see. Okay, yeah, and then now I can just Fire Covenant that. I could even replay Dark Ritual in my combat step, but that doesn't sound like it's too interesting. <laughs> Necron Deathmark. Well, unnecessary here, but... Ooh, and that is round one. Alrighty, time for round two. Playing against Stefan here, who's got beast of a deck. He's got... 
Foss's Oracle Demonic Consultation. He's got Soul Ring. He's got Tinker for Portal to Frexia. Like, man, you know, Mana Leak, a bunch of other counter spells and card draw. It just looks like a great deck. So this one's going to be tough. Also, we went 1-4 in round one, I believe. So not going to be the easiest. I'm definitely keeping this hand. He's mulling. I don't know what I'm, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm Imperial Stealing for. I might just go land go and then go turn two him turn three bow master something along those lines i think i'm also going to sideboard a fair amount in this matchup because i have a kind of a lot of removal in right now i could like fire off imperial seal turn one for time walk but that seems kind of weak it's not like time walk's even that good here what i think i want to do is wait and see if i draw entomb or an animate and if i draw one of those then I can set up a, a nice reanimation. All right. Mulligan to six. Dark Slick Shores Duress. There goes my Hymn to Turok. And he sees the Bowmasters. Neither of those are ideal scenarios, but what can you do? And he's down to four cards in hand. He's got to take the Hymn here. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're scared of with Imperial Seal, but <laughs> like obviously the card can do things, but. Oh, Memory Jar is not bad. Oh, actually, <laughs> funny. I'm going to Imperial Seal for Dark Ritual now. And I'm just going all in here. I'm just going to go turn two Bowmasters, turn three Ritual Memory Jar, and go for a nice little dub. Let's see. It's kind of a lot of damage. I mean, we'll see. If he taps out, <clears throat> then I get to do it. If he doesn't tap out, then I might have to wait on it a little bit. He's got a bunch of counters in his deck, so I think I'll just chill. If he's just doing nothing and I'm playing lands, which... Oh, there's my Entomb. <laughs> Let's just do this go. It just says go again. All right, I'm going to fire off Entomb. And I think Entomb Gristlebrand... It looks like I Imperial Sealed for this, or if he counters this, I'll be really happy. He might try to counter the, the Gorio's Vengeance instead. He knows about two of the four cards in my hand. Dragon Tomb was actually pretty good, because I feel like, A, he might counter it here, and that would be fantastic. B, uh, it sets up future draws nicely. All right, Bowmasters. Nug you. Draw. <laughs> Funny, there's the Gristle Brand Ritual. Jar. And this isn't lethal, but it's going to deal a lot of damage. And let's just do that. And then yield to this. And then play Xander's Lounge. And hit for nine here and hopefully he doesn't have an answer he discarded the thos's oracle and soaring led mox diamond nice that wasn't a bad one um i don't i don't think i care about the order in my deck all right <clears throat> and my hand my hand is kind of weak now but faithless looting with gristle brand eh, it's actually not even that weak first of all he has to have an answer to the orc token or he just dies second I still get to Bowmasterism, and Bowmaster in play probably is annoying for a lot of the cards in his deck. And I can Faceless Looting, discard Gristlebrand, or whatever I draw, and have a bunch of looks now at my Gorio's Vengeance or Life Death. All right, found land three into Vendillion Click, target me. And that's going to be Chump the, <laughs> the army. It's kind of got to put Faceless Looting on the bottom here. It's got to be better than what a random card. All right into Fatal Push. Well, I can't actually Fatal Push, so I guess I'll attack. Block and play my land. <clears throat> fatal Push isn't doing a whole lot for me here. But yeah, Soul Ring, Mox Diamond, LED, a lot of stuff. All right. <laughs> Preordain puts you to one. I imagine is not quite going to be good enough here. Memory Jar was a 5-mana deal 14 <laughs> that uh, 
Also, let me play one land. I got one card out of the deal. Into Brain Freeze? Okay. So just like, let's look at some of my cards here. I guess so. All right, up a game. Okay, so sideboarding here is interesting. I kind of feel like Graveyard Trespasser is going to be decent. I could put in Blight Steel in order to not get decked off Brain Freeze. I don't know how likely that is to work out. Um, I don't want the removal all that much. Bolt's probably fine. Bone Shards lets me discard. Fire Covenant looks kind of weak. Archfiend of the Dross. Necrogen Deathmark. I'm just, I don't have very much that can interact with <clears throat> Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> or, for that matter, Portal to Phyrexia. I don't actually, somehow have no, I have no ways to destroy an artifact. I guess I have, I have a Reclamation Sage I could side in. I mean, if I side in an Overgrown Tomb and a Rex Sage, I'd have two green sources. Sounds a little bit dicey to me. Mm. And Blight Steel in case... He brain freezes me, but then I draw it the next turn and die that turn. All right, I think I'd rather have Liliana the Veil in and Graveyard Trespasser in. I thought I was going to sideboard a little more, but actually I don't have as many things that I can put in as, I, as I'd as i hoped. And do I want to take out a Lightning Bolt here? I don't even think I do. I think I'd rather just have the Graveyard Trespasser in, and I think just fire away like that. All right, well, I had cards I, I wanted to take out, but I uh, didn't have that many haymakers here, so let's hope he stumbles a bit. That was kind of how it worked last time. Oh, turn three sneak Atali is really nice, but I can't keep this. All right, I like this. I'm going to keep, and I think I put Gristlebrand on the bottom. That's the one I'd rather entomb here. Okay. Well, I don't like... Whoa. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to need to draw one of my animates right quick. I think I actually just entomb the Gristlebrand now. <clears throat> and then hope to draw Goriel's Vengeance or Life Death pronto. I'm probably just going to cast a Time Walk and hope that... Uh... Oh, he just played a land. Huh. Hmm... So he has a counterspell, clearly. Yeah, you know, if he wants to counterspell my time walk, I'm okay with that. It even makes it so he can't bank buster here. <laughs> Mana leak. Or miscalculation. Oh, remand. I don't even <clears throat> know if that's better than drawing with bank buster. He missed a land drop. But who knows? I guess you do draw off remand too. And missing a land drop's not that bad when you've got a soul ring. Like, you've still got a lot of stuff you can do. Oh, does he have a counter spell? Doesn't have a land and is deciding whether to bank buster? You got a bank buster here. You can't just pass. Passing's crazy. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see what happens here. I, I, I don't hate where I'm at. I don't really want to looting the Atali into the graveyard. I'm already doing fine if I draw an animate, and I want to keep sneak attack outs. That seems pretty valuable to me. Oh, tinkering. What are we tinkering for? Not blight steel. It's coveted jewel. Oh man. I probably can't beat another counter here. I tinkered away the soul ring. I guess sure, I guess the bank buster gives you some cards. Do I have any one drops in my deck? Does this deck has a give a concealing curtains? No. No one drop creatures. I was thinking if I could like play a creature and time walk in the same turn, that would be sick. Okay. Just cast time walk again. And see if that resolverinos. Miscalculation. All right. Let's just cast Faceless Looting here. I could play Misfall Bridge, but I don't even really need to do that. Oh, I guess I didn't have to let the mana be floating. And I guess I'll just discard Double Black. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Grief is like the only card where that really matters. Oh, Mystical Tutor. For Demonic Tutor. Wow, his deck is disgusting. Soul Ring, Demonic Tutor, Tinker, Mystical Tutor, Demonic Consultation, Oracle of Moldiah. I'm going to need a pretty good draw game three in order to win here. 
LED too. Yeah, what do what, what you got for me? And Underworld Breach, Brain Freeze? This is like one of the best decks I've ever seen in my life. I didn't realize he had Breach too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. You, you got it. All right. Okay. <laughs> How do you beat the deck that has everything? Oh, uh, am I optimized for speed? I kind of am. Is Liliana the Veil any good? No. Deathrite Shaman, I, I guess it can mess with the cards in his graveyard. He has Mox Diamond. I mean, is that better than Bone Shards? Is there a different discard outlet other than Bone Shards? Maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll put in Scrapwork Mutt, take out Bone Shards, put in Death Rite. At that point, I think I want to swap in the Overgrown Tomb also. And I could cut Feywild Caretaker. I could cut Lightning Bolt. He didn't have very many cards that I, that I could hit with Lightning Bolt. I could also cut Dreadhorde Arcanist, actually. What if I cut the Dreadhorde Arcanist and the Bolt and put in Death Greeter's Champion? Firestorm? Liliana of the Veil? Liliana of the Veil seems like it could... Oh, actually, maybe Death Greeter's Champion to steal a Coveted Jewel? Uh, maybe Bolt is just still better. No, I'm going to try Liliana. All right. I really don't think I'm going to win this, but we will see. Turn one. Looting. All right, I'm going to keep this hand. <clears throat> I need to draw a black, but if if I do, I have a Tali in my graveyard. I have a time walk to give me some more speed. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll discard Yogwill or Fatal Pusher. Or... And I have Death Right that hopefully off this Faithless Looting could maybe get me some mana. I guess I'd have to draw two lands for that. <laughs> I love it when my opponents think on turn one, because that means they have a way better play than just land go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that this matchup is bad enough that a hand that puts Italian into the graveyard on turn one and has potential Inquisition and Death right up the next two turns plus Time Walk. I'm just going to keep that hand. Hopefully I draw Xander's Lounge. Troll of Casa Doom would also be a kind of nice draw. Or just a Swamp. Swamp would be okay too. The longer he tanks on turn one, the less of a good feeling I have. This is not going to go well. Turn one, Sheldock. Oof, that's bad news. I still think he's got another good play, like a Soul Ring or something in hand. All right, can I just draw a Swamp here in Inquisition? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, very nice. Definitely Inquisitioning here. Yep, he's got Soul Ring. Oh, he's also got Necromancy in Demonic Tutor. Mm. So I just have no outs. That's cool. This, this this deck is just... I beat him game one because he got stuck on two lands. Other than that, it's not happening. I, I mean, I guess I got to take the Necromancy. Otherwise, he just reanimates my Atali. I didn't see that. Now he can go turn two, Soul Ring, DT, Chromatic Star. I don't know what he DTs for at this point, but we'll see. All right. Soul Ring, Swamp, DT, yeah, and Star. All right, can I just draw Gorio's Vengeance? Gorio's Vengeance, let's go. I called the Swamp, it worked. Oh, it's a Soul Guide Lantern, that's what he DT'd for, okay. Well, that's not ideal, but maybe maybe it get, buys me a little time black cleave cliffs i could fa flashback looting but i think i'll just play death right shaman pass the turn so for him to make that play it seems likely to me that he has drawn some kind of action I mean, he might, he might not have. Maybe it was just a straight-up defensive DT. But I feel like DTing for a defensive card makes more sense if you drew something to do. But maybe he didn't. All right. Scrapwork Mutt. 
Yeah, I guess Scrapbrook Mud is fine to play here. I'm going to discard Yogwill because I don't think that one's doing anything anytime soon. Oh, into Raucous Theater. Ooh, if I can flip a land here. Yeah, I'll put that in my graveyard. Oh, it would have been so nice. And then I could have time walked off of uh, the Death Rite Shaman. Okay, I'm just going to pass the turn. Okay. If I can draw a land and I can go Goldspan Time Walk, I actually have a decent shot. I get to go Goldspan Time Walk, attack for seven, attack for seven. And then I'm somewhat close to winning. Obviously, like, if he has any spells, I'm just dead, but <laughs> what are you going to do? Okay, he's cracking Chromatic Star to start with. Sure. Do you have Underworld Breach? Hmm. No, just pass. Okay. That, I mean, that's about as good as news as I can hope for. Let's get Demonic Tutor out of here. Lose two life. All right, land, 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 land. Not a land. Um, I'm at 25 cards. I could flash back Faithless Looting. Yeah, I think I actually do. <laughs> Still no land. I was hoping to hit a land so I could use Death Rite. All right, I guess I'll discard these two. And hit for two. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm down to 23 cards, and he's got Shell Dock, so I do have to watch out for that. Just play land, go. You don't have anything. You've got nothing. <laughs> okay, that's land, go. Uh, exile, fatal push from my graveyard. Okay. Land. Well, that actually is not a land, but it's not bad at all. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is going to get counterspelled. Oh, it did not. Okay, so he doesn't have a counterspell. Oh, but I don't get to attack with it? That's a shame. Bitter Triumph. Make a token. All right. Um, let's hit for two. And then try to set up a win with Time Walk here. I have 22 cards left. Shell Dock Isle scares me, but can't do anything about that right now. And then I get to go Death Rite end of turn. Oops, then I do have a... Oh, there's a land. Hold on. Actually, let's get the Swamp. Had a black and then cast Bowmasters. See if he wants to crack the soul guide. Oh, he's going to mana leak it. Okay, so he drew mana leak. Sure. Draw. A little bit of action. Yeah, I mean, I guess I got to play this. So the thing I am not thrilled about here. Oh, he didn't draw a mana leak. He had bitter triumph already and didn't want to kill the. You might as well kill the dragon with it, use the Bitter Triumph, and keep the Mana Leak. This does activate Shell Dock. But... What am I going to do about that? Um, the answer is nothing. I wish I had one more land in the... in the graveyard. I think I got to do this. He, could, he gets to Shell Dock. But maybe he doesn't have anything good to shell dock. I make a fairy. Okay. Well, this time walk's actually never going to do anything, funnily enough. If he's got it, he's got it. Which is more of a testament to hit how bad of a draw he's got than anything I did. Like, I did very little this game. I inquisitioned him. I played a couple spells he had to deal with. But he had all the time and mana in the world, and if he just strung together a couple things, then he could have won pretty easily. Oh, I don't think he's going to win, though. Unless I get... Am I going to get a brain freezed out somehow? I don't think so. Forge on the Fairy Dragoon. I mean, I have lethal here. Or at least I'm going to attempt to. 
Let's see. Okay. You're on one. I have a death rate, so let's just cast Time Walk. Whew! We beat the best deck ever. Wow, this is sick. 2-0, let's go. All right, time for round three. Let's play for the 3-0, playing against Samuel Rolfington. And he's on like a mid-range red-white style deck, not like super aggressive. Oh, grief. Good grief. Uh, let's just go Xander's Lounge. All him on two. And then grief on four is my plan. With a bone shards up to hit something. Oh, there's an entomb. Oh, no, entomb's actually not that good. It's the reanimate that I want to draw. That's fine. Hit spell queller and survive triumph. Must have a land heavy hand if he was keeping survive triumph to cycle or is missing blue mana. Okay, so that's uh, Aurelia's Vindicator. Oh. Could just Gristlebrand him for a bunch of damage and draw a bunch of cards and grief him. Yeah, let's just do that. So Entomb, Gristlebeezy, Goriel's Vengeance it. Draw seven. Yeah. All right, well, we were going to win that one easy, so let's go. Okay, red-white mid-range. Do I want Liliana, Deathmark? Didn't run into anyone aggressive enough to want Firestorm, sadly. Uh, Dresspasser. I mean, I mostly like what I've got going on. This deck was hard to make cuts, but... I could see wanting to cut Memory Jar for Necron Deathmark in this kind of matchup. It's just a lot of creatures in this deck. Okay. I think I'm going to try that for game numero dos here. And let's see. On the draw... What do we got? Entomb, Grief, Bowmasters, Sneak. I mean, this is a lot of stuff. What happens here? I get to Grief him, and I get to... I could Grief Pitching Gristlebrand into Mitali, or I could Grief Pitching Fire Covenant. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I think I should just mulligan this. It just doesn't seem good. This, on the other hand, I think is pretty good. So, here... It's kind of interesting. I'm going to definitely keep... I think I put Troll of Kaza Doom back. Because I think Fire Covenant's solid against him. And then my plan, I guess, is get a little more info and see... Because I could I could Imperial Seal for Dark Ritual to set up Sneak if I draw a creature. I could Imperial Seal for Gorio's Vengeance. I don't know. Let's go Raucous Theater. Yeah, I mean, I'll keep Time Walk on, time walk on top, of course. I could also have gone to like, if I didn't have the looting, I could go seal and then play the surveil land. That can be kind of nice. Thalia, that's annoying. Just play the misfall bridge then, I guess. And then if I draw a land, what I can do is I can cast time walk on three and then covenant on four. And hopefully he plays some more idiots that I get to eat with the fire covenant. I take a little damage here on the way, but it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, if this is the Vindicator, that's going to be kind of annoying because I can't Fire Covenant it. All right, well, let's just draw. Or, alternately, I could just draw lands and then just cast a Sneak at some point. So I think I'm just going to go Time Walk. Take my turn. Bone Shards. Huh. Um, what are we doing here? I think I'm just going to play land and go, and then I'm just going to use Fire Covenant to kill Thalia, and hopefully he plays another creature this turn. I'm going to take four. <laughs> I don't think he's going to flip the Vindicator, but that would be funny. All right, I go to 14. And he's got a creature, 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 not a Planeswalker, please. Palace Jailer. Uh, okay. I mean, not ideal, but one, two. I go to 11 here, kill those two. All right, draw something. I'm Oh, Atali, perfect. So now I can go Imperial Seal for Gorio's Vengeance, Faithless Looting, 
Yeah, and I can do it all. So let's go Imperial Seal, Gordial's Vengeance, Faithless Looting, discard Itali, and do I discard Bone Shards or do I discard a Sneak Attack or Gold Span? I kind of feel like I don't want to discard Bone Shards because killing that thing seems pretty good. Let's discard the Sneak Attack, I think. And then Gorio's Vengeance, the Atali. All right, big hit. Let's go. Eagles of the North and Orcish Bowmasters. <laughs> All right. And then uh, <laughs> my creatures gain first strike. <laughs> All right, take one extra. And then now I'm the Monarch here, and I get to draw a card end of turn. Atali is gone. And then I can go Bone Shards, Dragon plus Bone Shards on the, the Vindicator. Okay. So he's going to do some Vindicating here. Oh man, Vindicator on the Eagle of the North is actually pretty annoying because when the Vindicator dies, he gets the Eagles of the North back. So he's going to Nug Eagles. Oh, and Bowmaster? Uh, that's, oh, I guess he didn't want me triggering off the token end of turn, sure. Don't need the island as much. Let's go Goldspan, Dragon. Oh, wait, no, I can't Goldspan. I have to Bone Shards, because um, because this still has Ward when flipped up. He has Eagles in hand. So let's discard a card or sack a creature. I actually kind of think it's sack a creature. Let's attack. Become the monarch. Black sack this and pay the ward two. All right. I mean, Vindicator was pretty good. And then I get the Bowmasters back. Draw end of turn. Okay. Feeling pretty good about this. I mean, I even have a Faithless Looting to, to get some value on. He's got Eagles of the North in hand. I don't care about that. And end of turn, I'm going to go Bowmasters. Then I can go Dragon Attack, Flashback, Faithless Looting. And I'm the Monarch still. It's pretty hard for him to not be the Monarch. Spell Queller? Hmm. If he just passes without playing anything, I'm not playing this Bowmasters, I don't think. Okay. Oliphant. Oh, that's pretty big. All right. Bowmaster. Nuggie down to 10. All right. I would like to draw something this turn. Xander's Lounge. Um, hmm. <laughs> I guess I could take a 50-50, right? Oh, no, I'm not quite. I don't have quite enough damage. I, or I could just flash back Faithless Looting. What am I hoping to draw with the Faceless Looting is the problem. Very few of my cards do anything. Oh, if I draw a Name Sticker, that would be really good. Life Death. I've gone through a lot of my action already. Hmm. I could play Goldspan and say go. That probably is the play. No, then he plays Eagles of the North. Uh, that's no good. Um... Gorios is gone. Life death doesn't do anything. Huh. I don't have jar in. I don't have unholy heat in. I guess I need flame tongue in next time. Though wait, did I did I bring the flame tongue in? No, I can't cast it anyway. Yeah, I didn't bring it in. Firestorm, recurring nightmare. Mind collapse, interesting. Is it 10? Because Eagles, yeah, I, I I just take lethal. I think I just... Oh, I want to flashback looting, but what, what can I hit? I don't have almost anything left in my deck somehow. I, I I thought I was in good shape, but then I've drawn a bunch of lands, and that hasn't really added up to anything. Funny. Um, I guess Namesticker Goblin is the card I'm drawing to. Okay. Or does Yogwill do anything? I guess it doesn't this turn, but... Okay, name sticker goblin, Inquisition and Faith and Fatal Push. Uh, wild. 
Olafont is actually going to get me. I mean, I, don't, I just don't have any instants, right? Oh, Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt is a card. No, I don't think that would do anything either. Okay, he did have Spell Clark. Oh, yeah, and he had Firebolt. All right, yeah. Wow, didn't think I was losing that game. Okay. Well, Aurelia's Vindicator did some good work. I do think I want Flame Tongue and Unholy Heat now that I've seen a little bit more. I do have still a lot of removal in my deck. And I think Dreadhorde Arcanist is actually going to be solid here. And I think Necron Deathmark might be a little bit too expensive. Not getting to play the gold span was unfortunate, but I don't think it it was right to play it the turn prior. Mm, what is my last cut? Maybe it is just maybe it just has to be the unholy heat. I still have bolt, fatal push, bunch. I have three one mana removal spells and bowmasters. All right, I got plenty. All right, on the play, let's go busted hand. Um, hmm. I'm going to keep this hand. I get a Surveil. I have an early Bolt. If I find two lands, I'll just get to go Flame Tongue. And, like, if I draw some lands, I can go Flame Tongue into Goldspan or Flame Tongue into Feywild, and that's really strong. And I have an early Bolt, and I have an Entomb, so if I draw Goryeo's Vengeance or Life Death, I'm, I'm solid. All right. Dreadhorde Arcanist. Oh, yeah. I will definitely put that on top. If he doesn't have a way to kill that, I can go turn two Arcanist. All right, no, no Mana Crypt, please. Okay, I can go Arcanist. <laughs> and then I could I could Entomb Imperial Seal. That'd be really funny. Entomb for Imperial Seal, attack Arcanist, flashback <laughs> Imperial Seal. <laughs> All right, let's see what he's got. Land would be pretty nice here. Okay. Yeah, I actually think I do. Entomb. Get Imperial Seal. Hopefully he doesn't have a removal spell. If he does, this is really bad. But I haven't seen... Oh, he has Solitude? All right. Well, that's a beat. He did, he did have to pitch a Leyline Binding. All right, now we're playing a fair game. I'm glad I drew the land. Oh, that was going to be so good. I would attack Dreadhorde Arcanist, the Imperial Seal, get Goryeo's Vengeance. Next turn, Dreadhorde Arcanist, the Entomb. Oh, and then he has Mana Crypt? Uh, this all went from... From good to terrible. Mm, I, I do get to bolt that down. All right. Land would be awesome here. Xander's Lounge. Mm, we'll take Mountain. Bolt. Pay the ward. Okay, is two cards in hand? No, it didn't work. Reprieve. Okay. All right. So he's going to flip Vindicator and he can get Solitude back in hand. That's fine, I guess. Thraben. Oh, he's not flipping it right now. No, he's got to have a land. Oh. Okay. Hmm. I mean, I have to try to kill it again, I think. <laughs> All right. Bolt the Vindicator. Pay the ward. Okay, okay. I, I feel like this is winnable now. I thought he might have a spell queller there, but he did not. Keep losing some flips? No. No, no, losing flips. All right, but I have Flame Tongue and Gold Span, and they're both pretty good here. Oliphant? Oh, Eagles. I kind of wish it was an Oliphant, because now he has Oliphant left in deck, but... Oh, on the plus side, if I draw a land, I can just slam Gold Span. And then set up a really nice Yogwell, maybe. Oh, that was so bad. Come on. I just drew two horrendous bricks the last two turns. Can I just draw a land? All right. Let's lose some Mana Crypt flips here. There we go. There we go. No Oliphants here. Just land goes. No, that's not a land go. Palace Dealer. Oh, my God. If I draw a land for Goldspin here, this becomes... Just unbelievable. All right. Land. Land. Land, 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 land. Okay, I guess I'll go Yog Will. All 
I can't entomb, sadly, <laughs> but I can, I'm at 16, I can Imperial Seal. All right. And I'm gonna get Faceless Looting, I believe. Yeah. All right. Pass the turn. I get hit down to 11 here. And I'm gonna go for Looting Gorio's Vengeance. And if he has the Spell Queller now, I basically just lose. It's four cards in hand, five cards in hand. Yeah, I don't feel good about it. Looting. Oh, this game was so, so winnable if I just drew a land. That turn, if I drew a land, I hit him. Flame Tongue jumps back into play. I'm the monarch. I have a gold spin and a flame tongue and a treasure in play. Instead, I'm just dead. The solitude on my dread horde got me pretty good, but. What am I hoping to draw here? Bone shards, I guess. If I even have the time. Fable. Yeah. I mean, bone shards probably still wins me the game. I would say. Oh yeah, it assuredly wins me the game. If I if I draw bone shards or any other discard outlet, I don't think I have very many. Then I get to go gristle brand you. I mean, a land actually still could win me the game. Pro post attacks, huh? Not, not, not the play I think I would recommend making. <laughs> like now, because a land lets me hit, get back, flame tongue, kill spell queller, faithless looting, and then have Gorio's vengeance up. So a land still does it. Okay, we're not drawing that thin. Obviously, if he has anything, you know, it's bad. Oh, he has elite spellbinder. Take my Gorio's Vengeance, sure. I'm at six. Goldspan doesn't do it. Uh, he had to draw the Spellbinder too. All right, get a Swamp. I have two blockers, so I can, and I go to one. I mean, obviously, assuming he doesn't have anything, which, Especially with a fable here, it seems unlikely. This was th th this was like me losing to this was like not as big of a travesty as Stefan losing to me round two, but obviously still, still, still just ridiculous. So two and one, and we'll see how the rest of the team does. All right, Mar Martel came in clutch. He he pulled out a tight uh, match three, and so we got Anton two zero. Didn't even have to play round three. Mac one one. Max one one. Uh, Martel 2-1, me 2-1, that's 8 wins that's a dub 2-0 and 5v5s, though actually 0-3 the last one in my team carried me, but no this this we were a hair's breadth away from 3-0-ing this deck was sick, it wasn't even like the best time walk deck, but obviously that card's great it just did a good job using Entombing Gorio's Vengeance, and the Imperial Seal was pretty clutch in setting that up had some pretty neat plays, still bummed I never got to do any of the cool Arcanist stuff, but the deck played out well we won the draft, went 2-1, really no complaints here That'll do it for today. Next time, maybe I'll put Arcanist to some real work. I, I still haven't had the Arcanist Ancestral deck I've always wanted. But you know what? There's going to be another draft tomorrow. There might be time for that. And I always appreciate you watching them. So come back tomorrow, see another draft, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.